I'm in the garage today and we are going to talk seeds, seed starting, and we've got a small package from Botanical Interests that just came in. So I'm going to unbox this with you guys and just chat while we start some seeds today. So first, let's open this and see if there's anything in here worth chatting about. So these are seeds from Botanical Interests. We've ordered from them for a few years now. Um, we'll link our affiliate link below if you're interested in purchasing seeds. One reason why I really like Botanical Interests is because the seed packs have a lot of information on them. So if you're new and you're looking for a little bit of extra guidance, these seed packs have um, lots of useful information. Okay, so some of what I ordered is for our personal home garden, and then some of what I order is for our farm stand and cutting um, to add to our bouquets. So we've got some new varieties. Um, we're gonna be trying this nicotina flower. And I'll show you guys the back of the seed pack. Lots of information. Um, what the seedling looks like, days to emerge, how deep to plant the seeds, um, seed spacing, and when you should thin them. It's nice if you're sort of giving seeds starting a go for the first time. We've got a variety of nasturtium. Um, these are going to be grown as an edible flower got swamp milkweed for the pollinators. If you're not um, aware, there are different kinds of milkweeds specific to certain regions. Swamp milkweed is the milkweed you want to be planting in the low country of South Carolina. So that's what we've got for the pollinators. We are giving lavender a go this year. I'm actually going to um, talk a little bit more about lavender later in this video. So I'm going to set this right here. Um, guys, this is a lot. I won't go over all of them. Some things for our personal home garden. We've got some black seeded Simpson lettuce. I ordered this variety specifically because it's supposed to be a little bit more heat tolerant. Right now, we're only growing lettuce in the fall and winter. And we like salads, tacos, wraps, things like that. So I'm going to give this a variety a go for the spring and maybe into early summer and see if we can harvest lettuce a little bit longer. All right, we'll do one more. Um, the globe artichoke improved. Artichokes are perennial and I have really been thinking hard on getting some perennials established here for us so that we have food to pick from that doesn't have to be planted year after year. So things like rhubarb, um, artichokes, asparagus, those are things that you can invest in once and eat off of for many years to come. So I showed you guys the asparagus that I started in the garage from seed in my last video. And I am also going to be starting artichokes and rhubarb. You can get artichoke um, crowns and rhubarb crowns are just going to be a little bit more expensive. So if you have the time and patience, um, all of those things can be started from seed. All right, so I mentioned lavender to you all. Um, that's one that has been really tricky for me to get started. And what I'm going to be trying this year is doing some cold stratification. So. The back of this seed pack lets me know that there are special germination instructions. These seeds germinate better after stratification, which is a cold, moist treatment. And there are more instructions inside this pack. So with us starting seeds today, I figured I'd show you how I'm going to cold stratify this lavender. So I've got a plastic plate here. This was just left over from a party. I've got some tissue paper. And um, this method is nothing that I made up. I actually saw this um, on another YouTube channel, The Suburban Homestead. And what we're gonna do is 
we're going to label this plate. We're gonna moisten this tissue paper and we're gonna scatter our seeds across the top of it. So let me go ahead and add a label. I've got a couple varieties of lavender I'm gonna be trying. This from Botanical Interest is Munstead variety and this from Johnny C is the Elegance Purple. And I've also got some lavender from Seeds Now. So hopefully between these three varieties we can really get some lavender going. So we're going with the Botanical Interest and I'm just gonna label the variety which is a Munstead Lavender. And I have read that lavender needs to be stratified anywhere from like 30 to 40 days. So that's what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna put in, a date in. Kevin, do you know what the date is? Mm -hmm. The 13th? Somewhere around there. All right, so let's see. It's January, maybe 13th, 2024. And I'll hold this plate up so you guys can see. So this lavender seed is not gonna come out of the fridge until about February. Um, let's just say, we'll give it a month. So 13, 24. All right, so that's what my plate looks like. I've got the variety listed the date that I put it in, and because I know that I'm going to forget the date that I need to pull it out. So when I pop in the fridge, I can just look at this plate and I know, oh, it's not time to take it out yet. It hasn't been 30 days. So I'm gonna take this tissue paper, which is supposed to release the seeds if they start growing into, um, into the paper a little bit better. And I'm just going to moisten this paper. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got the tissue paper on the plate and I'm just going to add a little bit of water. You don't want a puddle of water in this plate. I just want it just wet enough so that the tissue paper has absorbed all of the water. So this is gonna give us our moist environment. And from here, I'm just gonna take these seeds and I'm gonna scatter them across this wet tissue paper. With something like this, I'm probably going to go ahead and just use all of the seed that I have because if this stratification works, I don't want to have to come back you know, a month from now and start the rest of my seeds. It just kind of gets to be, you know, a waste of time. So this is what that lavender seed looks like. And I'm just gonna take these and drop them onto the plate. So there are a variety of plants that need this cold stratification. I think that based on what I've read, tends to be more perennials that require this stratification method. And different plants have, you know, different lengths of cold, or different cold periods, different durations of time that they need to be in the fridge. So since I've used most of these seeds, I'll open this pack up and show you the information that's on the inside. So if you're someone who really needs a lot of information when it comes to what you're planting and how to use it, botanical interest is the way to go. It's gonna tell us the plant size, the blooming season, um, sowing and germination instructions, how these flowers can be used in the kitchen, when to harvest them, recipes, and um, yeah, so very informative. All right, from here, I got the seeds scattered across the plate on the wet tissue paper. It's labeled, it's got a date, and I'm going to put this plate inside a plastic bag. 
I don't want a whole lot of air, so I'm going to close it up. And then this is going to go straight into the fridge. I'm not putting it in the freezer. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and it's going to stay there for a month. So we will, um, we'll come back to this. And if I forget, you guys just leave a comment and um, let me know and I'll update you on our seeds that have been cold stratified. The next thing we're going to get started are eggplant and peppers. So I mentioned um, seed starting these things in the last video, neither of which are cold hardy. So I'm starting them now because they have a longer germination period. Um, right here I've got Tabasco pepper from Baker Creek. And the planting instructions on this pepper say to start indoors eight to 12 weeks before your average last frost. So when you're seed starting, it's really important to know your average first and last frost dates. It's pretty much imperative to know your average first and last frost dates because what those things are gonna tell you is when it's the right time to get your seeds started. So if you do not have an indoor setup, um, you still wanna know your first and last frost dates because they're going to tell you when it's an appropriate time to start planting outside. Here in Cross, um, we are technically still in the low country of South Carolina, and our average last frost date is the middle of April. So around April 15th is our average last frost date. So I know that around then I can start checking the two week forecast to see if there's any frost uh, being forecasted. If not, these things that I've started inside can go out. If so, then I'm going to hold them. If I were not starting seeds indoors and I start checking the two week forecast around April 15th and I don't see any frost being predicted, say the weather's holding above 50 to 60 degrees, the soil is warm, it rarely freezes here, then I know, okay, I can start planting some of my heat loving things or warm season crops outside. So because we have the indoor setup and we are going to be selling some plants, we are going to be starting some of our things at the eight to 12 week mark, which would be now. So I'm gonna go for peppers first. And what I've got here is a seed starting tray inside a bottom water tray. So what this does is this allows me to water the plants from the bottom so that I'm not displacing the seeds up top and really the water needs to be at the bottom where the roots are. So this is what I've got right here. If you are just gardening just for fun and you don't need to start 50 pepper plants or 200 pepper plants, you do not need a seed starting tray like this. Um, you can start your seeds in little yogurt cups or recycled egg cartons. Um, what else? Cups. Cups, yeah. Um, uh, recycled salad trays, recycled uh, berry clamshells. Um, you don't have to have a seed starting tray to start seeds, so definitely don't feel the pressure to have that. I and using seed starting trays across the board for a matter of consistency. So if I need to start a large amount of things, say 100 peppers, and I have different containers, it's hard to maintain consistent moisture levels from container to container. So if I only had four to worry about, it wouldn't be a big deal. But right now, you know, on the other side of the garage, I've got 200 peppers started and I need to know that if I water that tray, everything gets watered and everything is evenly moist. So that's just a little bit about seed starting containers. Um, I'm going to take this painter's tape and I'm gonna label it with our pepper variety and the date. So I'm doing a Tabasco pepper. And we think today is January 13th. I'm using this painter's tape because I'm gonna fill this entire tray with the same thing. And so I don't need a bunch of little labels and that just has to do with the scale at which, you know, 
I'm growing things. If I wanted to do a section here, I might even just tape off these front two rows with a different variety. But because I'm gonna sew this whole, this whole cell tray with Tabasco peppers, I'm just gonna take this tape and label the entire tray. So now I know what I'm growing when I go to put it on the rack. Okay, from here, I'm going to fill these cells with some soil. So I've got potting mix here. Um, I don't use seed starting mix because a lot of the time it's sterile and we want something that's got organic matter in it so that as soon as these seedlings emerge, they have what they need as far as um, nutrition goes. So potting mix, potting mix, compost mix, something that's going to feed your plants. You don't want them sitting in the cell trays starting. Okay, so I've got my 50 cell tray full of potting mix. And from here, we're going to take our seeds. And for peppers, this pack specifically says they need to be planted a fourth of an inch deep. So the larger the seed, typically the deeper you can plant them. Um, for peppers, I'm just gonna sow them just beneath the surface of the soil so here's what these Tabasco pepper seeds look like not very large but you do want to make sure they're covered so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these in my salt tray And then I'm gonna come back and make sure I've got them covered. Going to sort of, I've got the end of a Sharpie, just barely making a hole, and then I'm gonna cover those seeds up. All right, so I've got all of my seeds covered. Um, the instructions were a fourth of an inch deep. I just pressed them into the soil just a little bit, put a little bit of that potting mix right on top of them. Peppers like it warm. So I am going to be placing these peppers on top of what's called a seedling heat net. Um, you can get these online. They aren't super expensive, maybe anywhere from 15 to $20. Some of them come with thermometers so that you know the exact temp to set them at. Um, I don't mind guessing a little, so I just want this soil to feel warm. If I stick my finger into this cell tray, I want the soil to feel warm. Right now, it doesn't feel warm at all. So I know that at least for the next day or so, this seedling heat mat is gonna be set between medium and high. And then when I come in and check it, say this evening or tomorrow morning, if the soil feels warm, and when I say warm, I'm thinking at least 75 degrees, then I know that I got this right. But your peppers are not gonna germinate if the soil is cold. So if you are starting peppers in your house, you're not gonna wanna set your peppers in the windowsill because that's oftentimes a really cold place this time of year. Um, if I were starting these in the house in a little container, I might set them on top of a dryer or on top of a refrigerator. 
but you're going to need to be mindful of the fact that when those seeds germinate, they're going to need adequate light. So six to eight hours of light if you're starting inside. So this is how I start peppers and we will update you guys as these germinate and as we transplant them out to the garden. But just remember your peppers are not going to be frost tolerant and they want to be warm. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna be sowing, eggplant. And again, these are a fruit, technically, that take a little bit longer to get started. So these seeds are from Seeds Now. And this first variety I've got is Pandora Striped and it sprouts in seven to 14 days. And this other variety is Florida Market and the germination is 14 to 21 days on this variety right here. So that's almost a month. Um, if you think about that, you know, in the big picture, a month of waiting. Um, if I were to wait until the frost passed to get this outside, or if I'm able to start it inside, I'm a month ahead and these plants are that much closer to fruiting. So I'm just going to start this last variety and we're going to do this, or I'm just going to start this one variety with you guys on um, this video and um, then we're going to wrap this up. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the peppers. All right, so we're going to label our tray. Or Plant seeds from Seeds Now. I'm gonna just take those out. Here's what those look like, similar to the pepper seed. And we're gonna do the same thing, just one per cell. And we're just gonna make sure they're covered slightly. That's it for the eggplant. I need to put some water in this bottom water tray. And again, remember your pepper and your eggplants like it very warm. So set it in a warm spot for germination or on top of a seedling heat mat. We're thinking at least 75 degrees. All right, we'll keep you guys posted on the germination and the growth of these plants. See you soon. Bye.